Okay, everybody, welcome back. Uh, I'm going to work on a series of Coffee Break tutorials and apply them to another game project. So I'm following the Coffee Break tutorials. This one's called Juicy Screen Shake. And you can follow this written tutorial. They are working with the Space Rocks project. All right, so I'm applying it to a different project. Space Rocks, um, you have to set up camera view and things, but I've been working on the Arena Shooter project. And on here, uh, let me just show you what happens. And what we're going to do is we're going to have the camera follow the player using views. And we're going to add screen shake to it. So I'm going to go ahead and run this first. So here's the, the project without a screen shake. All right, so everything's working okay, but what we want to do is we want to have it, every time an enemy is destroyed, we want to have the camera shake. It's a cool effect. And there's a several different ways to do it. We're going to follow this tutorial, but there is one little ch catch. Before we go, I want to go all the way, when we get to this stage here, I want you to know there is a little thing we're going to need to do, which is listed in the summary. So on the summary, it mentions how you can use this project in other places. Okay, and they give this example, if your game camera follows the player. So I already have the camera following the player. So what I need to make sure I do is to take this last piece of code in consideration when I make it. You saw how the game works. So it's time to follow the tutorial. And one of the things they recommend at the very beginning is to enable camera view. Mine's already set up, but I'll just walk you through how that's set up over here. Let's just go ahead and open up a room, see if it pops open. There we go. It, it's this room editor on the side I want you to see. All right, we got multiple layers on this project. And down at the bottom, we have this room settings. Okay, you go to room settings, viewport, and cameras. And notice enable viewpoints, uh, viewports is checked. And then there's this clear viewport background, that's optional. Uh, you could have it checked or not checked, shouldn't, work, shouldn't be a problem. Notice we start with the viewport zero, and we made it visible following the object player. Everything else we're going to do in code. So um, let's go back to the tutorial, because we have a divergence. When we get to this part here, it says the screen shake object create event. So they're talking about they could use object game, but for the sake of clarity, we're going to use this object called object screen shake. I'm not. I'm actually going to make an object for the camera. And the camera will include screen shake, but it will also follow the player. OK, so we're going to put all of that code into a different object. So if you're going through the written tutorial, you might find a big difference is what object we're dealing with. So I'm actually going to make an executive change. This is going to be now the object camera. All right, but we're going to go ahead and grab this code while we're here. And then I'll kind of walk you through as we put it into the code so you know what's going on. So we need to create a new object for our camera. So we got to create object and make that obj underscore camera following the naming of all our other objects in this particular project. There is no sprite. All we have to do is do that. We're going to go ahead and zoom in on here a little bit so it's easier to see. We're going to add our create event, and we're going to add our code. OK, so what we're doing here is we're creating variables that belong with the camera. So the, the camera shake is just. Uh, that shake means we're not shaking. If this ever gets changed to true, it will start to shake. We're also, by the way, this is called initialization. And initialization is just what's the first value when the game begins. So to create our shake time, we're just going to give it zero. We're not going to be shaking. There's no time to deal with. When we start to shake, we'll give it time. Shake magnitude is how much it's shaking. So we're going to give it a value. The higher the value, the more it shakes. It's going to be in pixels. So on the shake fade variable, that amount is going to be subtracted from the shake magnitude. Once the time has run out on the shake time, in order to have it fade out and be less and less, we just keep reducing shake magnitude by one quarter 
of a pixel at a time until shake fade is already down and there's nothing left. Then we just are going to reset the camera to where it normally should be. So how long you want it shaking, the lower the number, the slower it will fade out. So you can mess around with these numbers. Now this doesn't do anything. These are variables. And if you look here, all the yellow triangles are saying they've only been referenced once. So they're not being used yet. So now it's time to actually use them. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit more so you can see that. Nothing bothers me more than trying to follow a tutorial where the screen is, the code is too small. All right. We're going to make a step event for the screen shake, but we're going to make some changes to it. Okay. So uh, let's go ahead and create our step event. I'm just going to grab this code and then we're going to modify it. So this is, we're still in the same object. We're still in the object camera at this point. We're going to add the step event, just do a standard step event. Go over here, paste your code. And so this is saying, okay, if shake, well, shake was set to false. If shake gets set to true, then we're going to start doing this. So this is what's going to happen when shake gets set to true. When the screen starts to shake, this is what's going to happen. Okay. And I'll walk you through it, and then once we walk through it, I'll, I'm going to make some changes, and I'll explain my changes. Um, the way this works is once it starts to shake, Every loop, every step, 30 or 60 times a second, depending on how you set your uh, animation speed on the game. And by the way, you can set that using the gear icon. And I believe it's under general, where's the, uh, yeah, right there, game frames per second. This is how many steps get run. All right, cancel that. We don't need that. All right, let's go back and zoom in on here. So um, if it's doing 30 frames a second, in 30 steps, shake time will, if you gave it 30, I should say, let's say we gave a shake time of 30, that would be one second shake and then a fade out. So we're creating some temporary variables in here. And what's going to happen is every loop, we're going to offset the camera. We're going to shake it either to the left or to the right using this XVAL. And this is a random function called choose. Uh, if you put a series of possibilities in the parentheses separated by commas, it will randomly select one of those options. So it either is going to take the magnitude of the shake and make it negative, moving it to the left, or take the magnitude of the shake and moving it to the right. And then the Y vowel is the vertical. If we subtract from shake magnitude, it'll move up. If we add to it, it moves down. And then we're going to set the camera position. Now, this code right here is assuming your camera is not following anything. If your camera is going to follow a player, this is going to get messed up. Okay, so we're going to, we're going to fix this in a moment. I'm going to go ahead and show you what it looks like messed up, and then we'll fix it. Because I think it's better to fix things after you see how wrong it can go. All right. If that shake time goes below zero and it's going to continue for a while, we're going to subtract the fade from the shake magnitude. Every four frames, the shake magnitude will be reduced by one. Okay, so it depends on what your magnitude is. Remember, it was 0 0.25 as the shake fade, what we set it to. If our shake magnitude ever goes below zero, we're going to stop the camera from moving and we're going to turn the shake off. That's what's happening here. We're setting shake to false and then we're just resetting the camera view. This is also something that needs to change if you're following the player. So. If you're not following the player, this will work. And so I want to show you that because you might not have code that follows the player, in which case you want to follow this exactly. All right, we're not done though. There's a few more things we need to do. All right, we need to actually have a function that's going to shake the screen and then we're going to need to call the function. So over here on the asteroid game, you have different objects that can get destroyed. If you have more than ob one object that can be destroyed, and I'm not saying, you know, like four of the enemies. In my game, there's only one enemy object. That is OBJ enemy. If I had more objects, then that would be different. Okay? And I would need the switch. 
I don't. All I'm going to need to do is call the screen shake function, but I have to define it first. What happens? So let's look at it this way, calling it first, and then I'll show you how it works. So we're going to send it three values, 30, 5, and 0 0.2. Well, 30 is going to be the time. 5 is going to be the magnitude. That's 5 pixels to the left or to the right. Fade is going to be 0 0.2. And so it's going to be a slower fade. It's not going to fade as quickly. And if you look here, the larger the object, the bigger the screen shake. And of course, you get to decide what your numbers are going to be. And then we're going to take the object that, we, that has the shaking, and we're going to set the shake to true. And then we're going to change its shake time, its magnitude, and its fade from those initial values in create. So we're going to say, all right. When the object is destroyed, we're going to call this screen shake. And we need to tell it what object has these var variables. That's what the width is for. So with the object screen shake, we want to change all these values. All right. So we're going to create a script object. It's, well, it's technically not an object. It is a script. So you want to find where scripts is. Here it is. You're going to right click, create script. And then you're going to, oh, and we're going to name it effects. And if you decide to have other effects, you can put it in the script. I'm going to leave that comment there. I'm going to just paste it. All right, variable screen shake only referenced once, only referenced once. That's because nowhere in our code are we calling screen shake. All right, we already went over the code. There's one last piece we need to do, and that is when the enemy is destroyed, we're going to do a little screen shake. I'm going to pick the big one here, and I'm just going to copy that right off of the tutorial. And so now we have to go to our enemy object. Now, if your enemy object does not have a destroy event, you're going to need to add it. You want to put this when the object is destroyed, that's when we shake the camera. So you go into the uh, add it or go into an existing destroy. And then we're going to shake the screen. So let me just zoom in on here. So shake the screen. I like to put comments. Screen shake right there. Save the changes. Let's test it out. It's a little better. Now let's just wait till something appears, and we'll see if we got the screen shake working. Oops. If you let, if you let them attack you, then... Oh, we have a, sh okay, we have an error uh, with object. Oh, I used the wrong object screen shake. I need to change that to object camera. All right, so there you go. Let's fix that. All right, the error was in my script effects, and notice I should have used that. It says variable object screen shake only at referenced once. So be careful, whatever is the camera, Make sure you're using the right object. Okay, so here's the game using the script as is. Now watch what happens. You see how the ship jumps every time we destroy one? It gets even worse if we move. We need a way so that when we are shooting and things are shaking the screen, we don't lose where the player is. Okay, so that's what we're going to fix. So we have this camera view. We need to change this. Okay, so we need to get our player, so let's just go ahead and add the code we need. We're going to basically create a variable for our camera view position, okay, and we're going to set it up here. So we're going to create a var, and we're going to put it, uh, we'll just follow the example, underscore cam x, and then var underscore cam y, and let's zoom in a little bit more. All right, what is cam x? It's going to be equal to the player, obj players dot x. Okay? All right, so that will basically make the upper left hand corner of the camera be centered where the player's origin is from left to right. That is not going to work. So, what we want to do is we want to subtract the camera view divided in half. That way, Half of the camera will be on to the left of the player. Half will be to the right. So to get that, we want to just do a view camera. No, it's not view camera. Uh, let's start typing width. 
And here it is, camera get view width, okay? By the way, if you don't know the function you, or you, you kind of think you know it, you can just start typing out one of the words and you can get it there. So then we're going to do the view camera. And notice it says view camera 07. I'm going to type 0. And then we're going to just do a divided by 2, like so. That's our camera X. And the camera Y will be almost the same thing, but with the camera view height. You got to do the object player's Y position minus camera get view pause height. View camera, add the zero, divide it by two. All right. So when we set the view position, all right, what we want to do is we want to take the cam X and the cam Y. And if we are shaking, what we're going to do is we are going to take this X val, we're going to take the camera X, and then we're going to add the X val, and we're going to take the camera Y and add the Y val. Okay, so we're going to say this, Choose shake magnitude, and then watch this. We're going to put plus cam X, and over here, we're going to do plus cam Y. Oh, there's no underscore there. That's why it looked wrong. So now the X val is going to be this magnitude plus the camera X, this magnitude plus the camera Y, and then if we're shaking, we're going to set it. And then if shake magnitude is less than or equal to zero, we're going to just use the cam X and the cam Y here. Let's see if this fixes it. Save the changes. And so now it's just going to follow the player. I think what we need to do, since this is only if we are shaking, we're going to need to go ahead and do this again. Um, actually, let's do this before we go in. Because if we don't shake the camera, we still want to set the view position. The nice thing is if we end up shaking, we would change the camera view anyway. So if we don't shake, none of this happens, and we still have set the camera view. Let's see if this works. Now let's run it. All right, here we go. I'm not going to move to begin with. Wait till the enemies appear. Oh, that happens sometimes. All right, you can see the camera shaking. Let's start moving now. See how I'm still able to move? Ah, oh, there we go. All right. That's it. Just be careful you're using the correct object. You need to make sure it's the object that has these variables that you put in here. And I made the mistake. Uh, I followed the direction exactly. All right. Thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned for more videos.